Welcome, dear listener, to Haunted Tales, your weekly horror anthology, with stories full of ghosts and ghouls, crimes and curses, demons and devils and more. The engine growled as his foot hit the brake and brought the whole car to a quick stop. Tires were sliding squealing over the asphalt, and through the windshield he could see the hitchhiker jumping back, definitely surprised by his sudden halt. Gabriel smiled inwardly. It was late at night, and the guy standing out there, at the edge of the road, with his handmade sign, reminded him of the good old days. Decades ago, before the internet, before those damn campaigns about stranger danger, Fear of serial killers and such crap. He had seen so, so many of them. But now, they were a rarity. Hardly anyone dared to travel like this anymore, which was a complete shame. He could see the young man hesitating, looking at him with a mixture of hope and apprehension. His stomach growled at the sight. When was the last time he had a real meal? Weeks ago, he thought, hoped that the young man now slowly coming closer to the passenger side of the car wouldn't see the glimmer in his eyes behind the shades he was wearing and tried to smile amicably. Normally, his prey felt that something was wrong immediately. Time after time he had seen people, men and women, jump back and run off the second they had opened the passenger side door. Yet sometimes they didn't. There were people less perceptive, or simply too stubborn to listen to their instincts. And those were the guys and gals he loved the most. Easy prey, yet always seemingly surprised that someone else would dare take advantage of them. Their screams were the most delicious. Gabriel narrowed his eyes behind the shades, watched the young man reaching out for the door hesitate once more. He was one of the perceptive ones, he understood. His instincts must be screaming at him to run away, to not open this door that he might not be able to close again. Yet his fingers had already found the handle, and the mechanism clicked. It got opened. Just a crack, but already enough to let in a slight cool breeze on this hot summer night. The muscles in his jaw started to hurt from keeping that evil grin at bay that would give everything away in an instant. Just open the door, he thought, forcing himself to stay motionless, even though his own instincts told him to leap at his prey and devour it on the spot. But no, that wouldn't do. This road was empty right now, but the chances of someone passing by were still much too high. He needed an empty spot, some small side road or at least a dark corner out of sight to truly enjoy this evening. Gabriel felt the breeze getting stronger, saw the door now opening fully and a young man bending down to look him in the eyes. Something inside of him now began to stir as he caught his gaze. Drive! It seemed to hiss, far too fearful for his liking. Put your foot on the gas and haul ass out of here. But now he found himself frozen. He could feel his jaws relaxing, the smile disappearing from his lips. Something about this guy was off. His face looked completely peaceful, serene, but his clothes were old and dirty. The shirt and pants didn't match, and not just in color, but size too. He looked like one of those hippies that had used to hitch rides decades ago, but not like a real one. More as if he was trying to copy them without seeing the full picture. Those eyes. Thank God you stopped. I've been walking along this road here for hours. Gabriel heard a relieved voice, younger than it had any right to be, 
as the man jumped inside and pulled the door shut behind his back. There was clearly something off about him. He was smiling brightly, now closed his eyes and let his upper body slump against the back of his seat. Gabriel couldn't help but stare silently while the young man seemed completely oblivious to the danger he had put himself in. No, his instinct warned him. This here, his fake serenity, had to be a trap. There was no one who'd jump into a stranger's car and behave that way. At least, no one who wanted to stay alive. He could feel the rattling of the engine through his seat, unsure of what to do, while he let another second pass staring at his new passenger. A slow smile crept back up onto his lips. He'd finally realized something. One of the myriad of little things that set him off. There was a strange smell coming off the guy. Weed and patchouli. And beneath it, blood. This guy was hiding a dirty, dark secret. Maybe that was why he was so relaxed. He was thinking there was only one monster in this car, and it was him. Nodding once, he turned his head back to the road and let the engine growl as the tires started to roll again. This could be a whole lot of fun, he told himself, feeling the dread that had overcome him just a few seconds ago slowly turning, shifting into anticipation. He had never done this before having prayed and thought himself the predator. Slowly, the car picked up speed, and the man next to him fell into a fake slumber. Far too quickly to be real, Gabriel thought, while he kept half an eye on the guy's face. The muscles around his eyelids were shaking, straining softly. He was keeping them open, just a tiny bit. Very funny, Gabriel whispered to himself and could see the man's reaction in the corner of his eyes. His brow furrowed just for a split second. He was reacting to the noise, listening to him while pretending to doze off. What an idiot he had picked up here. This routine might work on someone who was truly innocent, but not with him. Not in a million years. He could see the needle on the speedometer climbing up the numbers, felt himself being pressed into the soft leather seat while still watching his passenger. One of his hands had sunk down, was resting right next to the pocket of his pants, where Gabriel could see the outline of a rectangular object. Don't be so hasty, he thought immediately realizing that the guy was going to try something not even a minute away from where he had been picked up. How is this dude still free to roam around? The police couldn't be that incompetent, could they? Or was he only the second victim of this pseudo-serial killer? He snorted derisively as he saw the index finger of his passenger hooking the edge of the pocket and could see the guy freezing the slits between his eyelids opening up just for a moment. Should he say something? Nah, this was getting kind of funny. Gabriel wasn't afraid of whatever this guy could do, and watching him struggle to find the right moment could get hilarious. He took one hand off the steering wheel, let it shoot forward along the dashboard, and watched with amusement as the guy tried to pretend to sleep again while his finger touched the button of the radio. Static filled the cabin, made the guy shiver, his hand still resting over the pocket. All he needed to do was find a quiet, off-the-road place where he could stop for half an hour. But the opportunity to play around with one of his victims was too good to let slip by. So he let his hand sink back, rest on the middle console, just a few inches away from his passenger. Let's see you make a move now. 
Gabriel thought, and felt a wide grin pulling on the corners of his lips. He let the static go on for a few more seconds, delighted in the completely motionless form of the guy still slumped in the passenger seat. How long until he would say something about the white noise? Or would he pull out whatever weapon he had stashed in his pant pocket? Signs whizzed by outside the car, but Gabriel had neither time nor interest in reading them. This was too much fun. His passenger would be making a move soon. He could see the hand shaking next to the pocket, tremors running up his arm. Was it the anxiety? Or was it the position he had to hold his upper body in? Gabriel pulled his own hand back from the console, turned one of the dials on the old radio until the incessant static changed into ever so slightly less annoying music. The arm of his passenger moved again, slowly, and Gabriel rolled his eyes behind the shades. Can you hurry up now? He asked out loud, curious about how this guy might react, and immediately could see the other one's eyes flying open. His hand shot into the pocket, pulled out something made out of metal, heard the clicking before the blade snapped out of the hilt, and Gabriel had to bite his tongue to stifle a laugh. This guy was hilarious. How about you pull over? He heard the young voice, now agitated, and couldn't hold back anymore. Chuckling softly, he pressed his foot down harder on the pedal, felt the car speed up even more the needle climbing higher on the speedometer. He was rapidly approaching the one moment he loved above everything else. His hand slowly moved up to his face, pulled off the dark shades that were hiding his eyes, before he blinked once, then stared right back at his passenger. Gabriel knew that humans were afraid of him. He could mimic them nearly perfectly had years and years of training, but his eyes, their color and shape, always gave him away in an instant. Sometimes, when he didn't have to drive around, he used contact lenses, but they tended to irritate him, so he had changed to shades decades back. And there was nothing more satisfying than watching the horror in his victims' faces once they realized that he wasn't just pretending to be a monster. He looked over at his passenger, but instead of wide-eyed fear, what he saw was a strange kind of consternation. The tip of the knife, still pointing at him, got drawn back. He could see the young guy's mouth opening, but his foot hit the brake before a word could leave his passenger's throat. Some kind of instinct had forced him to cut it short, and as he heard the tires screeching, he braced himself for the inevitable pain that was coming. A loud bang filled the car. He could feel the belt cutting into his shoulder and saw his passenger's expression turn from shock to panic as the sudden change in speed made his body fly forward and hit the dashboard with a deafening thud. Gabriel pulled his foot off the brake, steadied the car to not spin out while picking up speed again as a muffled groan hit his ear and he could see the hilt of the knife sticking out of his passenger's chest. The body slumped back into the seat. His eyes were wide. There were teeth marks on his upper lip. Shouldn't have pulled it out, man. Gabriel hissed, now feeling a rush of anger. The dumb piece of shit had denied him the chance to enjoy it all. Would bleed out on the passenger seat and force him to clean the interior yet again. Quickly glancing at the street ahead and behind, he could see that the road was still completely empty and abandoned, sighed before looking once more at the young man slumped back in a passenger seat. His head was resting against the door, his hands down at his side, while the knife was sticking between his ribs right above the heart. Shit. Gabriel hissed knew that it would take hours cleaning up the blood once it started gushing out. But it didn't. He shot a glance to the face, 
lifeless eyes staring up at the roof of the car. Then down again. There was the hilt. He could see the blade sticking in the shirt, metal piercing flesh, but there was no blood. None at all. No, this wasn't some kind of prop knife. He could see the shirt was pierced. The apprehension he had felt before was coming back to the forefront of his mind. Something was amiss, he had thought. Was that what his instinct had tried to warn him about? That this guy was only pretending to be human, just like him. What the fuck are you? Gabriel hissed, stared at his passenger while still speeding up. If worse came to worst, he could hit the brake again, shoot this guy out of his windshield and drive over him. The eyes suddenly rolled in their sockets, turning until they finally fixated on Gabriel again. There was a raspy, labored breath coming from the body that was starting to move once more, slowly shifting in its place, with fingers shaking, stretching and clenching. A low, humorless laugh followed the first breath, a hand raising up to the hilt, grabbing it and pulling the blade free from the bloodless wound. Fuck, Gabriel hissed, shook his head as the strange smell emanating from his passenger began to fill up the car. The body still moved far too rigidly to be dangerous. He could see the thing slowly snapping the knife shut, then having a hard time putting it back into the pocket. So, what are you? Gabriel asked, feeling angry still yet somehow intrigued. It had been a long time since he had seen something inhuman. Usually, he took care to not interact with them. No one would win a fight, because there was nothing to fight over. Humans were as numerous as the stars above. They all could live in harmony, feasting on them. So why would he risk injury or even death fighting against something else? The eyes, still fixated on him, shook in their holes as the body finally sat upright again, slowly wiping its mouth with its sleeve, the bite marks in its upper lip fading rapidly. He seemed different now, coughed suddenly, before spitting onto the floorboard in front of his seat. Gabriel could feel rage welling up inside his chest. Do you always treat your passengers like that? He heard the thing ask suddenly, now grinning widely. So, he wouldn't answer the question about what he was. Probably a smart idea, Gabriel had to admit. Nothing was immortal, but many, many things were hard to kill if you didn't know what exactly it was you were fighting. The thing he had led into his car was now angry, looking for scrap. Only if they play dead and then try to stick me with a knife. I would have killed you if you had slashed my seat. You have no idea how hard the letter is to come by. It chuckled again, and this time Gabriel joined in. Those eyes were completely fixated on him. He could feel the tension, taste the bloodlust coming from his passenger. Would it try attacking him again? If he made a move for the center console or the seat belt, he would have no choice but to do something, would he? How about you pull over? Let me out? The thing next to him asked, still smiling the same smile, still staring right at him. Gabriel shook his head immediately. He had no idea what exactly he had invited into his car. But the moment he stopped, he would find out, his instinct told him. The smell wafting out from the wound of it already made his jaws clench tightly. It was a stench that meant trouble, one that riled him up on a subconscious level. We both know that this won't end with me simply dropping you off, don't we? He asked, still grinning while one of his hands steadied the steering wheel. 
He could see that his passenger had his legs braced against the dashboard, already expecting his next braking maneuver. There was a glimmer in this monster's eyes as it nodded. Shit. The situation was completely fucked now. With a human serial killer, he would have known what to do. But this thing here might be capable of surviving a crash with a smile. Well, Gabriel whispered. If you do want to leave, you can jump out any time you like. He smiled and could feel the cold stare of his passenger. This time, the other one didn't go for his knife first. This time, there was no chance to react. Fingertips feeling like steel grabbed his shoulder, ripped the fabric of his shirt and buried themselves into his flesh. Gabriel screamed in shock and pain, ripped the steering wheel to its side and felt the tires losing grip. His passenger was still braced against the dashboard, used one hand to hold onto the seat while the other one tore at his flesh. He could feel it, the fingernails cutting through the muscle already reaching the bone beneath. This piece of shit wanted to rip his arm off. Gabriel waited a moment longer, felt a tire sliding before yanking the steering wheel into the other direction. The fingertips touching the bone beneath his skin and muscle were ripped from their holes as his passenger shot back and crashed against the closed door, away from him. He could see anger and fear in the monster's eyes, blood on its fingers that still tried to reach him. His own arm burned with pain, his muscles jerked, but he couldn't concentrate on that now. The moment the car stopped sliding, this beast would attack once more. He needed to act fast. Hammering his foot down on the gas, he felt the massive body lurching forward once more, could see his passenger getting pressed backwards now, unable to reach him. Just a bit longer, Gabriel thought, could feel the pain in his shoulder already subsiding but knew he would need to feed that much sooner now, too. Those same fingertips that had torn into his skin now grabbed the leather seat of the passenger side as the monster pulled itself forward and extended a hand toward Gabriel once more. He could hear the leather ripping and tearing, grabbed hold of the monster's wrist with his free hand and tried to stop the thing from getting to him once more. It was immediately obvious that he would be fighting a losing battle. The thing moved closer and closer, easily overpowered him as its fingernails aimed for his cheek. Gabriel could see the needle on the speedometer climbing again, felt the hot and cold rush as the fingers touched the rough skin of his cheek. It would only be a matter of seconds before this monster would try and tear his head clean off. There was just one way he could think of to stop it. The moment he let go of the wrist, the fingers shot forward, piercing his flesh while his hand reached down toward the brake. He could see the thing still staring at him, hate, anger and an intense greed in its eyes. It already thought it had won. Gabriel could feel the fingernails tearing through his cheek, pulled the brake with his hand and yanked the steering wheel to the side once more. If this didn't work, the monster next to him would rip him apart, he knew deep down. The fingertips left his cheek as his passenger flew back toward the door once more, only this time far quicker, far harder. Gabriel himself got pushed into the seatbelt, heard the wet plop as the fingernails tore his cheek apart, then a loud crash. The upper body of the monster had hit the inside of the door, bent it, broke the locking mechanism, and he could see it opening. A loud, inhuman screech was coming from the monster, while Gabriel already loosened the brake again and hit the gas. He wanted to get out of here as quickly as possible, heard the tires squealing as rubber burned on the road and the car lurched forward once more. The inhuman screams didn't stop, followed him while the passenger side door flapped open and tried to close again. It was dented, bent out of shape, but there was something else blocking its way. 
a shoe. No, a whole leg. He heard the thing screaming again, looked away from the road while the car was still speeding up and could see the sole of this monster's left shoe right next to the seat, slung in the seat belt of the passenger side. Gabriel looked over once more. The shaking side-view mirror showed him what exactly was happening. This beast had its foot caught in a seat belt, got dragged along as the car sped up, bounced off the rough asphalt, screaming every time it touched the ground. Gabriel laughed, cheered. Die, you fuck! He howled, hoped that the thing out there would be able to hear his voice. That's what it got from messing with him and his car. He had spent years customizing it, getting it ready. And now, he would need more money once again to fix the damn seats. He continued laughing, could feel the skin on his cheek flapping loosely with every breath. Even if this monster out there didn't die quickly from being scraped along the road, it would definitely feel the pain. He heard a loud metallic thud and the laughter caught in his throat. Over his shoulder, he could see the backside door being dented in, looked to the mirror and his blood froze in his veins. There it was, the monster. Its foot still caught, but now one of his hands had burrowed deep into the backside door, keeping its body and head off the asphalt. Through blackened, ripped open skin, he could see its gaze from the mirror. Gabriel howled in fear as he noticed the monster's second hand, bloody and shaking, aiming right for the rear tire. Don't! He wanted to scream, but the ear-splitting bang swallowed every other noise as the monster punched the rear wheel with a single stroke and Gabriel completely lost control of the car. He felt it lurching to the side, heard his own scream as the destroyed tire blew fully and the car started to somersault. It turned over and over again. He tried to brace himself, but lost his orientation in an instant before all the lights seemed to go out at once. As he opened his eyes again, he could feel the seat belt digging into his shoulder, sweat and blood dripping from his forehead down toward the ceiling of the car, now lying on the rough asphalt. He could feel some bones in his side scraping over each other, heard the rattling in his lungs. Nothing that wouldn't heal soon, Gabriel promised himself, as he touched the button for the seat belt and suddenly fell down. Pain shot through his whole body as he crashed onto the floor. It would take a bit of time, but he would be just like new in a matter of days. His bigger problem was the car. With it now crashed and turned over, there was no way to fix it up again. The years he had spent on it were all gone now. He crawled through the broken glass next to the driver's side window and heard the little shards scraping over the asphalt. Fuck, Gabriel hissed. The monster. What had happened to it? If it was alive and on its feet, it would definitely kill him now. He was far too weak to defend himself. Gabriel sped up, crawled quickly out of the wreckage, leaving a trail of blood behind, while the sound of the wheel, still turning now above him, filled the air. The moon was shining brightly in the night sky, as he tried to get up on his own feet and needed to brace himself on the wreckage to keep standing. He looked around. The road was littered with small and big shards of glass and metal. Pieces of his car. His heart broke at the view. And in their midst, he could see something that made his blood run cold again. A long, scraping trail ending in a body close to the car. It was lying there, a ripped apart face staring up into the sky too. Shaking just like it had done before, when it had woken back up in a passenger seat, the knife in its chest. Gabriel knew he wouldn't be able to outrun it if it started to come alive again. He needed to do something. Stumbling over toward it, he 
picked up the next best thing he could find lying on the ground. A long, sharp piece of metal. The body was still shaking. Tremors were running through its arms and legs. One of the hands, nearly torn off, moved strangely. With hard, heavy breaths, Gabriel advanced. He could feel his own body slowly giving out. Was there too much damage? His instincts warned him to seek shelter immediately, that he was far more hurt than he thought. Some of his organs were ruptured, but he needed to make sure this thing down on the ground wouldn't get up either. That would definitely be his end. Fucking die! He groaned, lifted the piece of metal from his car and brought it down on the shaking body. The wet noise nearly made him wretch, as did the stench now coming up from the monster. There was no blood, only some strange milky fluid that stank like the worst garbage he had ever smelled. Again and again Gabriel lifted the piece of metal, swinging it down at the thing. Nothing else mattered anymore. Neither the moon above nor the wreckage behind. He couldn't feel his arm anymore, could hardly see while lifting the broken piece over his head. His legs had long ago turned to rubber, but he kept himself upright through sheer force of will. This was important, he told himself again and again. Don't let it get up again. The head below him, on the asphalt, was completely unrecognizable by now. He could hear the hollow sound of each hit, but it felt like someone else was doing it. The world had shrunk down now to only himself. The rattling in his lungs was getting worse and worse. One more time, Gabriel forced himself to say. His legs wobbled, he fell to his knees. There it was again, the shaking. Or was that just his vision? He felt blood in his lungs, tasted it already in his mouth. The wound in his shoulder had reopened. Why did you do this? He asked out loud. The air felt ice cold on his skin. Long forgotten scars seemed to open again all over his body. His hand holding the piece of metal like a cane wobbled as he broke down and his head hit the ground. What was the point? Gabriel coughed. He could see his vision fading. Blood was hardly pumping anymore. There was the car, just out of reach, and the dead body of the monster. He shouldn't have picked him up, he thought as he rolled onto his back. The moon was shining above, brightly. He could feel his own heartbeat slowing already. Why couldn't you just leave well enough alone? Gabriel coughed, tasted another rush of his own blood in his mouth. It smelled like gall. What a useless life. What a dumb way to die. He could feel something sticking into his heart. Ripping it apart beat after beat. The moon was dimming, its light turning grey. Fuck you, he coughed, and his body grew stiff. Thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoyed this week's story. If there are any questions, concerns, or cute pet pictures you would like to share with us, there are links to our X, Instagram, Tumblr, and our Buy Me A Coffee in the episode descriptions. All the best to you, and please join us again next week for another haunted tale.